What's up everyone, my name is Vindrake from Cats Cozy Games. In today's tutorial, we're going to learn how to get more channels out of Applied Energistics by using a P2P subnet delivery system. Now this is a very important concept because it's literally required to progress through all of GTNH. If it sounds complicated to you, don't worry, I'm going to walk you through it step by step. Let's get into it. All right. So we're going to take this tutorial kind of slow because I want to make sure that we're not rushing through this and so that you all understand all the concepts. There are a couple of different ways to explain how P2P subnets work. I'm going to do my best to explain it to you what I think is the best way. Um, here I've just got a little uh, Dragon Egg setup that's providing us one amp of EV power uh, to our Applied Energistics network. Um, this should be plenty right now. Um, got an energy acceptor and then you always want to put energy cells on your network by the way. Both the mainnet and the subnet, they provide extra stability. They basically just are big power batteries. Um, definitely recommend putting these. There's a normal energy cell, then there's a dense version of it. Just whatever you can afford at the time. And so what we're going to do, also, we're going to call this um, like our main applied energistics cube. You can make a much bigger one. And in fact, I'm going to do a tutorial video soon. Um, so look in the comments, because it might already be there, for how you can get over 20,000 channels from a... Uh, energy cube and it's actually this design right here. I'll show you all exactly how that works in another video But until then we're just gonna explain how PDPs work. Let's come back over here and let's go ahead and hook this up to our main cube um, You always want to do your power gen to the actual main cube itself I'll show you why that's important later There's some ways where you can kind of make your network not work as efficiently as well It'll kind of stall sometimes if you don't do it like this um, So make sure you do this now, here's the first thing that you're going to do. Basically, what we're going to do is we're going to take P2Ps, a P2P tunnel dash ME, and this is going to be your go-to tool. And you're basically just going to put these all over the place on the cube. As many as you can afford because uh, these do take up power, so you do want to make sure that you don't do too many. So maybe I, you know, I just work on like you know, eight or so for now. Um, so we have a limited power situation. So let's do, yeah, let's do eight. That is eight, yes. All right. So what we're gonna do is each one of these P2Ps is gonna be able to take 32 channels from the main network and basically transport them somewhere else. I like to use the pizza delivery boy analogy where you basically have this subnet, which uh, my cohort cat chose pink for our subnet and purple for our main net. So just remember that pink is subnet, purple is your main net color. And so basically the idea is that, yeah, you get, you basically use your subnet coloring on all these P2Ps and imagine that the P, the pink is like your roadway for the pizza delivery boys. And each one of those pizza delivery boys, each P2P is bringing you 32 channels of main network. And as you go through GTNH, you realize how many of these channels you need. You literally need thousands to complete the game. And so we can take this as far as we need it to, you know, whatever location that we need it. And so the idea is that you're going to put a P2P on the other side right here. So one of these is going to be the source of the channels, and then the other is going to be where you receive them. Now, my recommendation is to make something called the Advanced Memory Card. This is, uh, I don't know if any other mod packs have this. I know GTNH does, and it's a very, very powerful tool. It's like a normal memory card, but souped up to the max. So basically you take this, and then you right click this P2P right here. And actually here, I'm gonna do something real quick. I'm gonna get rid of one of these. I'll show you why in a second. You right click this. Now, if you are new to this, my recommendation is this mode right here, the second icon on the left. Current mode, you want bind to input, like 99% of the time. Um, and so as long as you have that on bind to input, then what I'm about to show you will always work. Basically, this highlighted green one is the one that I just selected. And all these others are the ones that I placed over there. And what you're going to do is you're going to bind to one of these. And when you bind to one of these, it makes that one the input. Think of input not as like normal input output terminology that you would think. Think of it more as a primary and a secondary, a master and a slave. There's several different terminologies that you could use for this. We'll go with like primary and secondary. The input is your primary. And then the output is your secondary. So when I bind to one of these, I'll just bind to this one right here. Suddenly it turned this one into an output that I had selected. That's good because you want the uh, place that you're trying to deliver the channels to, you want that to be the output always. You want that to be the secondary. You want this one to be the, the primary. 
By the way, if you're enjoying the content and you want more GTNH, please like the video and subscribe. And also, come watch me and my wife Kat stream GTNH every Monday through Thursday at 1 p.m. Eastern. Uh, we're on a streaming channel called Cat's Cozy Games, and we're on all the streaming sites, Twitch, YouTube, and Kick. Hope to see you all there. And without further ado, back to the video. You can have a second P2P over here, and you can go in with your advanced memory card, and you can bind to that same input that's over here. It's this one right here. We can bind to that one, and then look at that. Suddenly we have two outputs now to one input, and that's because you can have as many secondary P2Ps to a primary P2P as you want. You can deliver these that set of 32 channels that's on this uh, ME controller face. You can deliver them to as many P2P locations as you want. But of course, you'll only have 32 channels total to work with. And so what I'm gonna do right now is I'm just gonna put like a couple of interfaces on here. These will be, each of these will take up one channel uh, just to kind of demonstrate the, con the concept. And Here's a really other cool tool in GTNH. Again, I don't know if other mod packs have this. The network visualization tool. You absolutely want to make this because it really helps you visualize your network very, very quickly, very, very easily. But what you can do is you can actually right click over here and you can right click and you can actually see what's going on inside of your network. And so we can do that to the subnet as well. As you can see, eight channels. So I'm going to show you why this is really important. You need to like, keep track of channels on your subnet as well. And that's because the number of devices we have here, one, two, three, four, five, six, and then seven and eight, we have eight P2Ps. We have, or we're maxed out. So basically if I tried to add another P2P here, then suddenly we would be in trouble, right? So what you actually have to do is you have to create your own subnet ME controller. You'll actually need several ME controllers ultimately. So, and you'll end up like probably running dense cable at a certain point because you'll need more than eight channels in a particular location, more than eight P2Ps in like a local area that you're working in. Um, and eventually you can get something. This is going to be later on in the game. I would say you could start doing this in IV to LUV um, relatively comfortably, just not over super long distances. What you can do is you can have a wireless controller and you can actually just move your p2ps around you know with this basically now we did fail to do one thing here uh, we do need a quartz fiber to make all this work because you actually need to power your subnet as well the main net has power the subnet does not however so we're just going to come over here like so we're going to put a quartz fiber right there and then we're going to put pink cable and then that should power everything you actually saw these just light up just now so now, if we take a look at this, and there we go. We've got our two over there, we've got our six over here. Um, I can easily add another over here now, actually another two. So I can place these right there, and then boom, there we go. Eight channels there, we've got two channels there. And then as you can see, we've also got this over here. So I can extend this P2P subnet, and I could get a P2P over here now. And we could use the advanced memory card, same concept. And my advice is to never leave an empty um, P2P tunnel ME lying around. That's not the main network. That way, when you right click this, you know that all of these empty unassigned ones are actually on the main network and actually giving you 32 channels. If you start littering this area with like empty P2Ps that are not assigned, then all of a sudden you're gonna look at this list and you're gonna get confused because you're gonna suddenly see, oh wait, which one of these are on the main network? Which one are these empty ones on the P2P? So um, yeah, make sure that you um, just always leave the empty ones there and never, only only add an empty P2P over here if you're about to assign it, basically. That's the safest way. So we can bind another one and that bound to that one over there, the blue highlighted, as you can see. And now, suddenly, we have, uh, we have another 32 channels that we can mess around with. Very, very easy. Um, and you can see the power of wireless. This can actually tidy up your subnet quite a bit once you're able to get to this. Obviously, this is not gonna be available to you as much, if at all, in the EV age, when you first have access to all these materials. But eventually, eventually you'll get there. And as you can see, there we have one other, um, on our, one other device on our subnet. We can click these. We see four devices there. We see three here, we see five here. You know, we got all these different pizza delivery boys. They're, they're doing work already. They're 
going along this pink network and they're delivering 32 channels at a time, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, now, if I put basically like if I put um, 20 devices on this and then 20 devices on this, 40 total, we would be eight channels short because again, we're using the same P2P here. And by the way, I didn't mention this before, but you can actually name your P2Ps if you just right click the name section and we just type in test and there you go. And this can kind of help organize things if you want to go find a particular, you know, you can actually search through this list. You can search test, for example, that we just named it. So you can find things very easily. The advanced memory card does a fantastic job of organizing all this stuff. Um, now I am going to warn you about something. And that is something that I've encountered is that if you don't power the main network cube directly and instead you try to deliver power to your entire network uh, like this instead. Uh, let's see. Not, let's not use that. Let's use the purple. And let's say that I wanted to power our entire network like this instead. Um, now, this network is small enough where it's probably not going to be an issue here. But as your network grows, you're actually going to see your network stall more and more. So basically, if you try to power everything on a main network side that is delivered via, via P2P, you're going to have more issues. So I would recommend powering your network cube directly. Instead, you're probably going to have a much easier time. Also, this isn't even delivering power because you would have to add another quartz fiber right here as well in order to deliver power to the subnet to then deliver power to the mainnet, etc. So eventually, uh, you're going to have a bigger main network cube. You're going to cover this with more P2Ps. You're going to have, you know, dense cable here as well because you're going to have more than eight P2Ps on your main network. And uh, by the way, you cannot, unfortunately, you cannot have dense cable next to a P2P. So you have to run these in uh, little sections of eight channels, uh, which does create a bit of a wiring challenge. But if we come back over here to what we've created, as you can see, you can have these little eight channel sections. So each of these little colored sections like this yellow here or this green here um, are eight color sections. And then you basically connect all of those sections up with a particular color dense cable. And then here we're using a wireless connector to bring it down to our subnet controller. This is our subnet five by five controller. And then we're actually taking the subnet with these wireless down here. Uh, let's see if I can get down there. And then we're distributing it with the dense cable throughout our base. And again, eventually when you get like infinite AE power, which you will eventually in the game, right around the UV age, you could just spam wireless like crazy. Uh, it's, it's such a nice way of organizing everything. So uh, eventually you'll get to this point. This is the network cube that I said I was going to do another video. Uh, again, it'll be in the comments if it's already made. And you can get over 20,000 channels in the end, which is more than enough you need for g 2 age. But, uh, you know, it's fun to flex as well, right? So, if that tutorial helped you, please give us a subscribe and a follow and comment below. Tell us if you enjoyed it, and we will be back with you with another tutorial very, very soon. Until then, y'all take care.